Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I am the founder of the Marriage Foundation. And if you've already subscribed, you know our approach to marriage is so different. So even this question, why does my husband disagree with everything I say? This is not a, a, a really tough question. What you really want to know this is, is, is what should you do about it? And this is where we are very different from traditional marriage counseling and those who give advice about marriage in that I and our counselors, we really try to show people the path towards a marriage that is meant to be filled with joy and filled with love. And if you're focused on why my husband disagrees with everything I say, and I'm not saying you are, you know, maybe it's just a small annoying aspect but let's deal with the whole because when you deal with the whole, then the little things, and this may or may not be a little thing to you, but they don't seem to matter as much. In other words, if you are just floating in joy and floating with love, you know, like the day of your marriage, like that day, would it bother you really? if he disagreed with you about things and yeah, I know everything is an exaggeration and the answer we know is no that was a rhetorical question and that's because when we are filled with love and filled with joy then things just sort of we don't care and why is that this is an important thing for you to understand because you're married, you got married to be happy and to feel love. And so even though this is happening, that your mind would go there describes to me that your marriage is not perfect and it should be, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, no one's perfect. Nothing is perfect. And I say, that's, that's not true. You you're created by perfection by God and this is not a religious discussion and you as a soul are perfect and you have free will and you have volition and you have a consciousness of you know what love is and we're not talking about you know the the regular definitions of love which it really don't cut it you know it's not in just an increased like it's not an emotion, it's so deep, it comes from the heart. Think about, think about love. Think about what love really is. Think about it in the context of when you have felt it, like when you were exchanging vows or when you see your kids asleep and, or when you're embraced with your husband in sexual union, but you lift it out of the, you know, the uh, sexual part and you're feeling that connection, that love. Don't you want to feel that all the time? We do, but we're not taught about it. We're not taught about how to cultivate love. We're not even taught that we should cultivate love. We get married and we slip into a mundane existence. And I'm saying to you, that's not how it's supposed to be. We have a consciousness and our consciousness can be divided into three levels, you might say. The primal, which is very selfish. It's driven by the drive to survive, by self-preservation, I, me, mine. That's a very primal consciousness. And it exists within all of us to a degree. And then there's, let's skip the middle and go right to the highest. The highest is the consciousness of joy-filled love. And that's the consciousness that comes from who we actually are. We're souls. And we're supposed to feel that love on a constant basis. But what happens is we get drawn down into the mundane demands of life that we have to take care of. I'm not suggesting you don't. And the primal is coming in and telling you, watch out for it, watch out for it, watch out. And so, we end up living on this medium plane, this mundane plane of existence, 
and we forget that we got married in order to live on that highest plane of love and joy. Now, what we're not taught is really important. We're not taught that we have the ability, it's an innate ability to both strive for perfection. And what is perfection? Perfection is the experience of love and joy. That is perfection. We have that ability to figure out how to strive for those states and we can learn what to do. And so instead of caring about your husband disagreeing or agreeing or not taking care of his clothes as he should or eating everything that you prepare for him and all that typical nonsensical stuff compare it to love and joy which would you choose you're going to choose the love and joy but we're not taught how now if you've been if you're a subscriber to this channel you should be you've been getting a sense that there's something going on here with the marriage foundation's take on marriage that you don't get anywhere else and you're already starting to learn. Oh, I have free will. Oh, I am the soul. I have a body and a mind and I have the innate right. It's God's gift to me to feel love and joy all the time, all the time, all the time. We need to know how we're not even taught growing up how to control, to manage our mind. In fact, the current thinking is that you basically are your mind. That's who you are. Who am I? Oh, I am Jill. I am Patty. I am Rebecca. I am a soul. Yes, now in this particular place and in time and space, I am identified at, by my name, by the fact that I'm a woman, by the fact that I have these feelings and all of that. But what if you withdraw your attention from those and you go, wait a minute, I am love. I am the soul. I am ultimate freedom, joy, wisdom. And that's why I got married so that I could experience who I am in, and I call it the sacred space of marriage where unlike in the rest of the world, you can open your heart without fear of being taken for granted, taken advantage of when you learn how. Education in our world is lacking. Sure, we're advancing technologically and we learn more about math and engineering and the environment, but we don't learn about ourselves, about our needs, and about how to achieve. And that is my recommendation, is that you go deeper into this. That, look, your husband disagrees probably because he's mad at you for some bizarre reason. And you're probably taking a stand because you're identified with your mind and you're not just letting it go, seeing it for what it is. And when he disagrees, you could go up to him and give him a big hug and tell him how handsome he is and how much you love him. But your mind gets in the way of your heart. And that's what it comes down to. So stop that. Stop allowing your mind to dictate what's working and what's not working. And instead, use your free will, which is not of the mind. The mind is just a computer. Use your free will to uplift yourself, to feel the consciousness of joy, ever new joy. So I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I do hope you're a subscriber. Maybe you've been following and maybe you want to become a TMF marriage counselor. We would love to have you go to the website, see what we have to offer. God bless you. Like this video and take care. Thank you.